Okay, I'm going to do a, um, a walkthrough on what I did for wiring in the external voltage regulator. I have to use my iPhone because I can't get any closer because I just bought a, a low-grade video camera and it only lets me get so close. So anyway, basic equipment, you're going to need these tools to um, do what you need to do. Okay, what I'm first going to cover is um, one night, uh, I was, oh, one morning I should say, I was going to work at like 3 o'clock in the morning and my lights all of a sudden dimmed down and I have no voltage so I pulled to the side of the road to find out what's going on. Alright, figured I, I might have a bad alternator or a voltage regulator. So I get into town and if you guys want you could watch my emergency roadside surgery I did outside of Napa when I got a hold of the the voltage regulator down there and the, um, what I had to do there to get this thing fired up at home so I had some power going in the battery so I don't go go dead. Well, with this Cummins diesel it doesn't pull power but the the lights and anything else and the computer in your tack and everything will. Okay enough of that. So what I want to do is to, to ascertain whether the voltage regulator is bad or the alternator is bad. I'll show you where the PCM is. The PCM is behind the airbox on the firewall. Dodge, as well as other vehicle manufacturers in their infinite wind system, um, engineered the voltage regulator module into the PCM. So when that goes bad, you're left with uh, a couple choices. You could spend from three to fifteen hundred dollars for another PCM, or you can do an external voltage regulator. Um, all the parts and stuff and material that I used uh, ran me roughly about 40 bucks in an hour of my time. We'll add another uh, 45 minutes to redo the job again. Okay, um, I, I cleaned all the other wiring and stuff out when I did it, and I put in some new connectors and so forth. Um, I highly recommend you get these type of connectors. This um, is the um, uh, Spade connectors, they're the 22 to 16 gauge, and the blues are 16 to 14. Um, part number is 15-152P, and it's marked 12 underneath of that. Um, all these were gotten from Home Depot, believe it or not. These bullet splice, I highly recommend to use these. Um, I tried to use the uh, red butt connectors. They did slide over the pin, but they did not... Uh, provide consistent connection. Okay, the part number is 15-161F or 15 is the number and the bullet splice F. They're female, they're fully insulated and they're for the 22 to 18 gauge. The reason I like it, let's see if I can get one here. If you look up inside, you can see they have full metal sleeves. They slip down perfectly onto the voltage regulator right there, as you can see. Okay, on the 12 o'clock pin, you can run a, uh, a positive ignition power source and you splice it together into one wire like I did right here. And make sure you put that on the 12 o'clock, not at the 3 o'clock position. That's for the other field wire. If you do that, you'll burn out the regulator. It does not matter which type of field wire you use as long as the power goes through the 12. Okay, what I did is to ask, get back to what I was saying about figuring out what was wrong. There's a couple diagnostic tricks that you can do. The first one I did, which is a little bit hazardous, and you've got to be very careful what you're doing with it, is you can run, start the vehicle, take a regular screwdriver, with it running very carefully, and don't stand directly in the path in case it grabs and throws it. Again, I disavow any responsibility for the information I'm providing. This is solely my opinion, and you are encouraged to check it out, find out your own information, but this is what worked for me. Okay, if the alternator is working and i.e. getting excited, and I mean in the literal physics, physical way, physics way, is it will generate an electromagnetic field. So thus, when you touch the pulley, you should feel something like a magnetic pull. It wants to stick to it, even with it running. Okay, when I did that, I could feel it was sticking to it. Another test that I did is to ascertain whether the, the voltage regulator or the alternator was still good is you can do this as long as you have a dumb 
alternator, i.e. has no internal voltage regulator, etc., whatever. What you do then is you remove all the backing off the back of the alternator here. You can see the field terminals right there. Leave only the hot terminal onto the battery. Okay. Then hook up two wires from the field terminals, and you can run them to a battery. This is the passenger size battery. Um, I hook uh, one lead onto the positive, and then I hook my voltmeter. All that showing in the, the roadside emergency surgery I had to do on this truck. Um, then once the voltage regulator is hooked to it, then I take the remaining fuel wire and I touch it to the positive and I watch the volt voltmeter. Make sure it's got that's got good connection. If it shoots above 16 volts, then you're pretty well sure that the alternator is good and you don't have to take it off the vehicle. The other side, then you know the voltage regulator in the PCM is bad. Okay. Um, a simple hookup that I did on the side of the road is once I um, took the wires, crimped them all, put them on the terminal, and make sure that you tape up the square terminals back here that came off the field so they don't short. Okay, once everything was mounted in here and I used self-tapping bolts and stuff like that, that really helps. But on the road, I had to put it behind the battery. But when I got back home, I did everything again. By the way, all this stuff, the wire, you can use a three-prong wire if you want. Hook power up here or whatever what works for you. I ran the positive hot wire regulator underneath the stripping over there. Okay. All right, now we're on the other side. Okay. There's the the fuel solenoid shutdown plug. It's the green with the black stripe. I'm using that. I uh, just stuck a wire in there temporarily right now to, uh, until I get a spade connector. Okay, I did a first hookup with that to the voltage regulator. And um, I was getting a little bit higher voltage. Now, I stand to be corrected. You guys can check this out. What I've, I've come to a deduction is your power source, your voltage source, going to the regulator should be as close to the battery voltage as possible. Um, the voltage that I tested off the, the fuel solenoid plug was around 12, a little over 12 volts. So what I deducted was it was, in a sense, telling the voltage regulator that I, the battery had a low charge and was telling it to kick out a higher voltage to charge the battery. Well, everybody said, you know, I was throwing about 15, almost 15, 15, 2, 15, 4, and everybody uh, checked said, oh, that's not too bad. Well, it was still creeping me out and so forth, but I wanted to be safe and sorry. Now, if you can get close to that, and you're, um, some people say they can use the ASD relay in here, or whatever, again, to reiterate, get that power source to the voltage regulator as close as possible to the battery voltage. You may want to hook up the other battery, it be the same, whatever, but I'm running one right now. I'm going to be doing a remote battery disconnect later. If you subscribe and you want to find out how I did that, that's, you're more than welcome. But instead, I opted to wire in a, um, let's see if I can get, there we go. I wired in a generic relay. At the beginning of this, you will see that um, I lay out a diagram. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the end. I drew out a schematic on how I hooked this up. Um, what I did here is uh, pin 85 is the ground. Pin 86 went is going to the field shutdown solenoid, the positive ignition wire here. Sorry, and. Pin 87, correction, pin 30 here. I went ahead and that's my 12 volt in, power supply in, and I wired it into my fuse box. I undid the bolt for the battery and just wrapped it around that. And that seems to be doing the job. And pin 87 at the top here is where I'm pointing. I'm sorry. Pointing here goes to the voltage regulator. There's a pin, center pin, where I'm pointing to. You may not be able to see it. It's called pin 87A. All this is referred to the schematic that I drew out, and, I'll, and you can review that. That is hot. Um, 
Uh, don't know why it's hot, but you know, on the other hand, is this is one of the modifications that you can do if you have a headlight switch problem. By the way, mine did burn up, and that's another video I'm going to be making showing what I did with that. Um, you can also uh, gang relay these if you want for the headlight modification, if you so choose. Okay, um, otherwise than that, when I turn the, the truck on, it starts and runs fine, and the voltage is down. I'm pulling about 14.4, shoots about 14.5 volts. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy, and it's stable. Um, again, reiterate, make sure you take the time, put in the proper connections, make sure everything is tight, you've got no shorts, um, and you shouldn't have any trouble. Um, $40 and a little bit of my time versus up to $1,500 for a PCM. Hey, that saves money. The only thing you have to put up with is the check engine light on. I'm working on some type of theory or whatever. I'm going to have to think that through and draw it up. You know, I'll make a schematic and I'll test that, see if it would work. Um, if you guys and girls have any questions, please feel free to contact me and I do my best to answer them. Again, I don't profess to be a professional videographer or whatever or um, I'm just, a, I think, a, a little bit above average mechanic. That takes care of my my baby here, my ride. And I'm going to be fixing um, the pole cutoff that I have I installed because of the fuel solenoid went bad. Um, the choke cable wire broke. And later on I'll show you how I fixed that by using, um, and I highly recommend, keep a little supply of braided cable. Good luck. I thought I'd give you guys and gals another shot. That's um, where the dashboard meter is um, stabilized right now. Uh, like I said, I'm throwing a little bit over 14 volts, but um, as long as it stays there, I shouldn't have any trouble. Um, like I said again, you gotta live with a check engine light or put a piece of tape over it. Thank you. And um, like I said again, I'm gonna have the uh, roadside emergency video at the end of this so if you want to watch it you're more than welcome it does show how I use the bolt meter and stuff but my voice is a little bit drowned out from the engine sound and stuff like that it's some glaring it's, it's from that video camera I just briefly showed you I still gotta play with and get the hang of it a little bit more thank you I'll try to give you a better clear to, um, video of the diagram that I draw wrote Okay. This is pin 85. And this is your ground. This is pin 30. It goes to a battery or 12 volt power supply. This is pin 86, which I rod it to my fuel shutdown solenoid plug. That goes on and off with the ignition. I removed the solenoid because it was defective. Pin 87, the outer one, I routed it to my voltage regulator. This is the hot positive ignition or hot wire that will go to the 12 o'clock pin with a field wire twisted together as one into that 12 o'clock pin. Do not put it in the 3 o'clock pin. If you do, you will instantly burn it out, 12 o'clock only. This is pin 87A. This is always hot. This is the diagram that came with it. I will also show you how I wired it up later.